Today I would like to talk with you about how to grow seedlings in trays. Also, I'm going to discuss how you can have more success in your garden and larger yields by transplanting seedlings that you've grown in a tray to your garden over sowing seeds directly into your garden. Let's get started. All right, why should you grow seedlings? The larger seedlings, like these here, are going to be less attractive to birds and less likely to be completely destroyed by insects. Grow them until they are of decent size, put them in the garden, and then an insect will do a little bit of damage to it, but it's not going to entirely destroy a small seedling that sprouts directly in your garden. Growing seedlings in a tray, like we've done here, allows you to select the strongest plants for your garden. By only using the strongest plants, you can get a better yield because you're not using the weak plants that just aren't going to produce well. By transplanting a seedling directly into your garden, you're not going to have any open spaces. These okra, if you space them 12 inches apart, uh, for example, you put okra seeds directly in the ground, one or two of them didn't come up, you're going to have an open slot in your garden. Or you need to come back in, put another seed in it, and then that plant is going to be a week or two behind everything else. By growing more than what I need, selecting only the strongest plants and putting them in the correct spacing, I'm maximizing the available space in my garden. If you learn how to grow seedlings in trays, you can start these indoor when the weather is bad outside and when it's too cold and you can have a well-established seedling ready to go into the garden as soon as your weather permits. This is going to greatly increase the length of your growing season. We grow all our seedlings according to the Mitleider gardening method and they are in the Mitleider seedling trays. Even if you do not use the Mitleider gardening method, you can apply these steps into your own seedling program. The seedling trays that we're using here are 18 by 18 and they're filled with a mixture of 75% coconut core and 25% sand. It's important that you understand there is no nutrition in the mix that we're using in this seedling. Because of that we have to add the nutrition to these seedlings on a daily basis. I will cover that a little bit later in this video. An open tray like this makes seedling production and bumping up seedlings as they grow easy. You don't have to worry that there's not enough space in one of the compartments in a container for your new seedling. If that seedling requires more space, you just spread it out a little bit more in that seedling tray. These are reusable year after year. They're relatively inexpensive to build. Because we're able to space them according to what they need, we don't have to have multiple different sizes of trays. You don't have to have different size containers. You can just space them out a little bit more in your tray and you're good to go. Now you certainly don't have to use the Mitleider trays. You can use whatever you have on hand or even build your own. If you get a tray that's much larger than this and you fill it with soil, or your custom growing medium similar to what we do, you need to know that it's going to be heavy and it's going to be hard to carry. Our garden is 50 feet away, but when that soil is wet and we have a bunch of seedlings in it, not that the seedlings weigh a lot, but these trays are still 40 pounds or more. These trays are also open on the bottom, so they have adequate drainage for any extra water to run out. They are outside, so if it rains, they're going to get rained on. You'll need to make sure that you have good drainage. We do have a video on the assembly of the boxes that you're looking at here. I will put an iCard to that video here for you and we will also add a link in the description box below. If you're interested to see how we mix our custom soil, we've got a video on that. I'll put an iCard here as well as a link in the description box. Now these seedlings are already started and established. They're actually ready to be bumped up into another container and I'm going to use this one 
and another one on the ground here behind me to do that with. I know that they're ready to be bumped up because of their size. They are grown out, they are competing for light, they're grown over one another, and I'm slowing down the growth rate because they can't all get access to adequate amounts of light, air, and resources like nutrient and water. Both of these trays, everything in them is going to get bumped up and spread out to give them adequate room to continue to grow. I do have a video where I show you the process of actually starting seedlings in these trays. And again, I will put an iCard here for that video and I will put another link in the description box. Now I've got the first several seedlings pulled out of the seedling tray over here to the right and I'm ready to transplant them. What I'm going to do is poke my bibble down into my growing medium all the way to the bottom of the tray and I'm going to make a cylinder not a cone. Make a cylinder all the way to the bottom that will allow the root bowl on that seedling to drop down in there. Take as much of the root ball and the soil attached to it as possible and always handle your seedlings either by the leaves or the root ball. Do not handle it by the stem. If you break your stem you're going to kill your seedling and it's not going to grow. If you rip a leaf that plant will still continue to grow and you'll be able to harvest later in the year. All I'm going to do is drop that down about to the crown which is where all the growing originates from on that beet. I'm going to use my dibble and slide the soil over in two places up against those roots. I do not want to compact the soil around the root. The plant needs to be able to get oxygen down to the roots to supply oxygen to the plant. I will further settle the soil around the roots when I water. That water will settle the soil or our growing medium in this case around that root. If you have air pockets around your root it's going to dry out the plant and it'll die. All I'm going to do is continue to space these guys out Again, handling it by the leaf. Drop it in to the crown. And press the soil up against the roots. Just that easy. In those instances, when you get a larger root ball that comes with the plant, you want to leave all that soil on that root that you can. You're just going to make your hole in your seedling tray big enough to accommodate that big root ball. Earlier in the video I said that we're only going to put the strongest, healthiest plants into our garden. This guy has never been doing very well. It has a very slow rate of growth. I'm not even going to transplant it. This one's just going to go out in the yard and not be used. If you put this seedling and again, it was started at the same time as all these others. This is a chard, I believe. It, it's not going to produce well. It's going to have a slow rate of growth and it's going to be occupying the space for a plant that is going to be healthier, more vibrant, and going to produce more food for you. Let's get rid of After you've got them transplanted into your tray, you need to water them in. And that is going to settle any air pockets that are around the root and to help get them through the shock of being transplanted. Alright, I'm working on cabbages now and in something that has more leaf material like these cabbages do, we also want to prune just a little bit before we transplant. And let me go ahead and pull this cabbage out and I'll show you what I'm wanting to do. These first leaves here, that guy, and that one, I'm going to go ahead and prune off of here. I'm going to get them out. The less leaf mass that the plant has to carry through transplant shock, the better it's going to be. And 
I also have these infernal cabbage moths on here. I have eggs and little bitty teeny, teeny tiny caterpillars on the back of these leaves. So outside of my seedling tray, I'm going to go ahead and remove them. And after I have watered these guys in and that water is dried off, I'm going to apply BT to kill off these little caterpillars. I've got quite a bit of damage on these guys. They'll be able to come out of it after I treat them, but I want to get that managed and under control now before they destroy my seedling crop. After I have pruned that cabbage a little bit, I want to get that root ball as far down in as I can get it. And once again, at two points, push the soil up against that root ball to remove the air pocket. Now you can just barely see these little caterpillars in here. You will find these on any of your brassicas. They're pretty easy for me to squish at this point and the eggs are also coming off of there. BT, for those of you that are concerned, is organic. It is not harmful to you, bees, or even your pets and it is very effective at controlling these cabbage moths. Alright, now I have showed you how to transplant and I still need to transplant these, bump them up and give them more room. But I want to also show you how to start seeds in your seedling tray. That's how I started these guys and I'm going to do the same thing here with crooked neck squash. I have got cabbage coming out of the greenhouse today and tomorrow. I'm going to replace that with some of these straight neck squash. I said crooked neck earlier. These are a straight neck. Anyway, when you're putting seeds in, first thing you're going to do with the mitlider method and what I'm doing here, these instructions on the back that tell you how deep to plant them, don't read them. You're going to have more success if you do it this way than if you follow the instructions. Particularly if you're growing in your own soil and you have heavy clay, disregard those instructions. First I'm going to make a little furrow in here for my seed and I'm using the edge of this 2 by 2 to make a straight edge. Like so. Yep, and I just jacked it up. Alright, like so. I don't need a whole lot of these, so I'm not going to fill this row up. Now, again, I'm using this squash seed here. It does not matter what seed you use. You want to cover that seed two and a half times the thickness of the seed. So, laying flat, I want to cover it with either soil or preferably sand two and a half times the thickness of that seed. So I'm going to pick oh, six or eight of these. I don't want a whole bunch. There's only four of us. And I'm going to put them in that little row that I made here. Put them in your row. Lay flat. If you have a seed that is damaged, it is cracked open, it is broken, or it just looks like it's not healthy, don't even plant it. Pitch it out. It's not going to develop well if it does, and typically it's going to be a weak plant that's not going to produce well for you. Don't even start it. Just get rid of it. Now, we had rain this morning, so it's going to make this task a little more difficult. My sand was sitting outside, and it got wet. If you cover it with sand that is dry, this process is a lot easier. It's easier to shake out of the can, and it is also easier to cover your seeds. You want to use, or ideally, we use the seed... Nope. Ideally, we use the sand to cover with because it is super easy for that new, tender seedling to push up through the sand. Because I'm using coconut core, and sand to grow in here. 
I could absolutely cover with that and I'm not really packing that down so much as I'm leveling it out. If you're growing in a heavy clay soil and that clay over the top of that seed gets wet, when it dries out it's going to get hard. That seedling is going to have more difficulty pushing up through that soil to get the sunlight. If you're doing this in heavy clay soil, use that sand and you're going to find that you get a much better germination rate. Those seedlings just often don't have enough energy to push up through that hard compacted clay after it's dried out. I do use the sand in my coconut core here just because it makes it easier to see where my row is at. Before I water these rows, I want something on it that will act as a diffuser. I want it to diffuse the water pressure from my can so that it doesn't disturb the bed where the seed is sitting. I use either burlap, and this is some pretty old, gnarly looking burlap. Just place it over that row of seeds or the entire tray if you're filling a tray and water through the burlap. You can buy the burlap in the craft section at Walmart. This shelf liner is also a good alternative. Once again, it's going to act as a diffuser and diffuse the water pressure and keep from disturbing that seedling. Water through this every day. Peel it back to check for sprouting seedlings. If you see a sprouting seedling, water it one more time. Remove your diffuser and then you will just continue to water it normally beyond that point. If you start your seedlings in your tray outside under direct sun, you don't have to worry about hardening them off. Folks are going to disagree with me. I'm telling you, everything that's out here, all of this, all of this was started directly in the sun, full sun, all day, every day. And they're doing well. The only time you need to harden them off is if you start them under an artificial light inside. All right, my last bit of advice for you today. When you are planning your garden and deciding what you're gonna put into your trays, plant things together that are going to be of a similar height or a similar size when they come up. If I plant my tomatoes or my squash in there with the beets and the basil, the tomatoes and the squash are going to quickly outgrow that basil. The leaves are going to be out over the basil and they're going to prevent that basil from getting any sun. So I plant my tomatoes together, I plant the squash together, and the low crops like these beets and chard and kale are okay to plant together because they're about the same size. I would like to hear what trays you use to start your seedlings in and what growing medium you put them in. If you are interested more in what a Mitlider garden is and how we grow it, I will put a link up here for you to our Mitlider gardening playlist. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.